You ever have one of those days where the sun is shining at the wrong time? Like when you're on vacation and it's cold and rainy, except for the day you go home? These are the times when I feel completely lost, completely out of sorts. I drink coffee to kickstart my brain, hoping to enlighten me. But all it ends up doing is making the problem worse, sending it aimlessly turbocharging around the house, stopping to try new things, then jetting on again. I expect this is something like a fly does. A little cocaine-driven insect frantically searching for something to live for before it dies. So instead of staying in the bunker, waiting for the war to subside, I grab my rations, wrangle my two sidekicks, and go headfirst into the dismal day. When you're searching for beauty, what do you find? When you're alone and surrounded by nature, do you see it right away, or do you look past it in search of something touched up or photoshopped? A woman perfectly lit by the sun and a couple of studio flashes off to the side. Is that something you really think you're going to find? Really? Or is it just something you want? I would say we look for both. When you're taking a walk in the mountains, you expect to see nature as beauty, but when you step into civilization, on the ground level, you expect to see beauty of a human kind. I get worried when I lose sight, when the only thing in front of me is a mirror or a computer, when I'm trying to think of something constructive and meaningful to do, but decide to take photos of myself with my cell phone instead. What an idiot, I usually think as I quickly delete the photos. See, I'm afraid I'll lose my phone somewhere and someone will go through my photos and laugh. Granted mine are no different than anyone else's self-portraits, but to me they feel foolish and self-absorbed. I post nothing on Facebook unless it includes members of my family taking the attention off of me. So back to my nature walk, my scavenger hunt for something beautiful, something that doesn't make my head hurt, something that can release the pressure caused by frustration. I first pay attention to the typical stuff, the obvious scenery staring back at me, slapping me in the face and asking if it's not good enough or important enough to stand for something beautiful. If I were to tell the mountainside that it just wasn't pretty enough, but I still wanted to be friends, would it run to the restroom, put on more makeup and ask, how about this, does this make you happy? I tell it that the problem is mine, not its, and walk on. I would of course then expect a large pine tree to conveniently fall on my head, crushing me into the rocky ground I walk on. Brushing that thought aside, I decide to look at what's beneath my feet. The brown pine needles blanketing the mountain floor. The different kinds of mosses growing on the rocks, causing my step not to always be as sturdy as I'd like. I wonder how deep some of these rocks go. Some look very small on the surface, but maybe what lies beneath is gargantuan and not a mere rock at all, but a piece of the mountain. My cohorts and I push on, but take our time. When I pause to take a photograph of the mountain range or some odd plant I've never seen before, they also pause, but stick their noses to the ground and take in the vast variety of smells. Smells like bear poo and deer dung. They tend to stop a little too long in the deer dung, popping pieces of deer waste like a child eating milk duds in a movie theater. The thought of this makes me want to vomit, so I shoo them away. As we continue to walk, the thought of the small brown balls in the bellies of my dogs won't leave my mind. I must find something else to extract the thought. Oh look, a cactus. Contemplating life. I hate that statement. If we stare out into the distance, letting our eyes go soft and glaze over, why is it worth contemplating life? Why must we be thinking of a big picture and not some of the small stuff? Or what if we're not thinking at all, happy to have a vacant moment where the maid can come in, make the bed, leave a small Andy's mint, and a freshly vacuumed floor? We can then return with the same knowledge that we had before, but now, for some reason, it's more organized, less frustrating, and a lot of the time, only the immediately important thoughts stay close to the surface where the others are still at the diner, finishing up their afternoon coffee. So when I hike the side of this mountain, I'm not seeking an answer to life's big questions, but a vacation, I guess, from responsibility. I'm not worrying about the dogs running away or myself rolling to the bottom. Just walking, enjoying the sun, the breeze, and making the most of being alone. Okay, so the frustration is lifting. I didn't think it would because of how tightly wound my head is, but the pressure is releasing. I can almost hear a high-pitched hiss like the air seeping out of a car tire punctured by a nail. It often makes me wonder when you have a headache and the circumference of your skull feels larger, if it really is larger. Has it actually swollen a little bit? Has the blood thickened like clover honey causing the blood vessels to expand like a snake eating a rat much larger than its mouth? Regardless, my head doesn't feel swollen at the moment. It's deflating to a normal size every minute, and the sticky thoughts that were congesting my brain are softening and passing with the other thoughts. The thoughts that aren't stuck in a doctor's office or a grocery store checkout line. Nope, they're moving right along now. So just like that, huh? Just like that, everything is okay? 
my brief journey is over? The dogs and I head back down the mountain. I try not to follow the same path I came up on just to keep things random. It's getting a bit late and it will be time for my wife to get home. I hope she's had a better day than me. I hope all of her thoughts were clear, her head was light and free, and I hope she'll be relieved to be home. Relieved to be there with me. Maybe we'll take a bath. I'll need to check the dinner schedule and see what foods to prepare. So I guess it is just like that. Almost like a switch. Things are back to the way they were before. Before I started working this morning, before my daily exercise, but just after I woke up. It's like that. A fresh start of sorts. Like the relief you feel when your hangover is finally passed and the day's possibilities once again open their doors.